I believe that the worship experience is one of the most consistent public theological things that we do. Especially if you are part of a community of faith that worships at least weekly. It's in that space where we celebrate, we remember, we recall, we proclaim. Everything I learned about God was in my worship space as a kid. And that was good and formative until my lived experience didn't quite match what was going on in the worship experience. See, as the early church gathered in homes to worship, remember, they are gathering and they're trying to figure out this Jesus movement thing out. And somewhere along the way, as the years go by, it becomes, it leaves uh, being a movement to being adopted by the empire and it becomes the sanctioned way of doing things. One of the questions that I left between my lived experience and what I was experiencing in worship was, who are we worshiping here? What is the emphasis here? And what are we trying to hold up as we gather together in worship? This became even more true for me when during my middle school years, I experienced sexual assault in the church. What I was hearing on Sunday was not responding to what I was experiencing. Somehow, some way, the message that I received was, we don't talk about that. We don't deal with that. We have to keep the things cool here. Needless to say, I left church. I didn't want anything to do with it. My experience was too deep. The pain was too much. And I just couldn't go on holding up whatever it was that I was supposed to hold up. See, the other question that began formulating in me is, just like the early church had to wrestle with empire, I believe that our churches today have to wrestle with another empire. And I believe it's the empire of whiteness that tells us how to deal with lived experiences like mine, that tells us how to love and who to love and where to love, that tells us these are the ways you are to believe, that creates a system that is over above other lived experiences. And so, I began to ask the question, wait. See, I grew up in a Hispanic church. 
So I want you to know that when I refer to whiteness, I am not necessarily just talking about the color of skin. Although that's part of it. Whiteness is about a system that says this is what's good. This is not. And so it made me wrestle. It made me ask questions. It made me do the hard work of discovering what is behind all of this. Why are we holding on to this so much in so many spaces of worship? Why do we not challenge the way we understand salvation and the way Jesus' actual Aramaic words came out, which was him emphasizing about life, not about being saved? I thought about this for a long time, when finally I discovered that I had to lose God to find God, that I had to go through a process of getting rid of everything I thought I knew about God and all the ways that that thinking had trapped me and continued to injure me, into discovering a God that was expansive and loving. So, asking the question that I keep asking to this day, what is it in our worship experience or what would our worship experiences be if we did the hard work of asking, how does this worship we do every Sunday hold up empire and the systems of whiteness or how does it challenge it? We are called to be a different kind of people We are called to be a people of the way. And I think that way is an opportunity to ask the questions, to check in on how it is that we design worship in a way that kind of cracks open these systems that we have placed so that people can truly Find their lived experiences in the midst of our worship space. When was the last time you heard a hymn about divorce? (laughs) And yet, more than 52% of us are divorced. When was the last time that you heard a liturgy of lament around violence towards women and children. When? We want the Jesus victorious, just like the empire wanted a Jesus victorious. We want that. We don't want to deal with the messy stuff, the hard stuff. And yet Paul reminds us, if you're going to worship, worship in spirit and in truth. Truth needs to be a part of our worship experience. 
I believe that the world is looking for a community of faith willing to tackle even their own hardest questions, willing to be able to say, in this worship experience, we will remember and we will lament. In this worship experience, your lived experience will be a part of the liturgy, which is the work of the people anyhow. In this worship experience, we will be on a journey together of hope and a journey of healing because we're willing to confront the hard questions. See, it's time that we stop worshiping God in our image. And that we embrace the God who wants to live, move, and breathe in all of us so that we can be this beloved community that actually expresses God's image in the world. Oh, I pray that it is so. I pray for all our sakes that it is so and that we may discover through the journey of asking the hard questions, of tearing down the systems that bind us, of confronting whiteness in our Christian space that we may be able to discover that we are free We are whole, and we are loved. Thanks be to God. Thank you.